Hey everybody, welcome back to Storky Farmstead. Today we have Papa Sammy, yes sir? I need to hurry up. We have Papa Sammy with us today. When we get through moving this tarp, we're gonna show you guys how to do two things. How to run your worm castings and how to set up a fresh new bed for your worms. So you guys stay involved in the videos. We're gonna break the videos up into two. That way you can watch one video on how to run your castings, one video on how to set up that fresh bed. So you guys enjoy, soak up all that knowledge and have a blessed day. Oh, thank you for watching. Please like, sub subscribe, and comment. Yeah. All right, let's fix it. run this bin. Get all this back work along. This bin's in two sections. Yeah, the divider. The divider right there. Yeah, divider's right there. All right, Daddy, you want to explain to him why we have this blue plastic? The don't like light. Actually, too much to have to kill So you, you need to keep them covered good. This gives you an idea of what the temperature is. And what's our temperature right now? Right now, it's about 76 degrees. All right, and the outside temperature, guys, just for an update, it's <laughs> about 92, and the humidity is pushing through the roof here in South Louisiana. Now, this is not ugly. This is food. If you'll notice, it, it won't take long. This will be gone. And the thing about keeping these worms, people, if, especially in the environment, how you say it, environmentalist? Environmentalist. <laughs> yeah. This would be going into the uh, dump, the trash. Uh, a, a small town, just a small average town, dumps tons of this every month. And that's wood pulp, right, yeah, basically? Yeah, and, and, and what your worms eat this, turn it into this, and which is best for the environment, the dump? For this. That's right. You would save thousands of dollars every month in a small town. So, I mean, this is not just for plants, it's for the environment. This is actually um, something I read prior to us doing this was that closed loop systems, if you're in, interested in creating a closed loop system, this would be your, your first step, guys. Getting rid of food waste that you, again, would put into your landfill by putting it into your worm bin. All right, All explain right. that. A quick rundown. Two by eight lumber. Now, these are treated. Yeah. So, we put plastic, guys. Keep the worms. Keep it from, from any of this getting wet and leaching chemicals back into it. All right, come close. And this is what cardboard, leaves, and stuff turn into. There's no odor. That's the prettiest, cleanest dirt you've ever seen. Now, Papa Sammy, you say that worm castings are a soil amendment. Oh yeah, it's better than that. It's it's from the plants, from the plants to the plants. That's hormones, right. Uh, the trace minerals, hormones, you won't believe it. Uh, I did a little hormones. research before no. you came, and uh, I heard that people, a lot of people, are using bat guano is that how you say that yeah. bat droppings in their gardens that want to be like you know sustainably ran and i did a little research and come to find out there is higher nitrogen in worm castings than in bat poop and this will put uh uh commercial you buy the uh bacteria liquid and it's fertilizer you a little blue crystals you put in yes water. I don't know the name of it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, this is better than that. It, it leaves no salt, no chemical salt in your dirt. Um, and it, it makes your plants good. Don't take our word. Rhonda Sherman, North Carolina University. She is the guru on this. Yes. I mean, you can get on her YouTube, and when you finish talking, to, when, when she, look, watching her, you'll believe her. That's right. If you've been following any of our videos on our no-till market garden, which we started this year with Canty Field of Dreams, Miss Donna Isaacs. I uh, also work with Miss Bahia Nightingale out of uh, Cleta, which is in central Louisiana. If you've been watching any of our videos, you know that we only amended our compacted clay soil with two things. Well, three things. Rabbit manure, 
compost and worm castings. That's it. Okay, so here is my dad. Now he made this. Why don't you explain this right here, Papa Sammy? Five gallon bucket, cut in half. One end, one end, and then the other end. Okay. Cut in half. Took the wire, wrapped it around the bucket, just wrapped it around, look. And I run a piece of PVC through the center. No bearings, no fancy, just a hole in the wood with a plate that won't jump out. Came back down the hill, took an old hose bill that you round up your garden hose on. You made me a hammer, like you turn. Notice, different size wire, one eighth, Quarter. The real fine stuff drops here, your worms and stuff goes out down there. So you'll see that we have a bucket set up down here where we're going to catch our worms and the larger pieces of the bedding that they've not broken down yet. Let us make this real clear. I used to get very confused when I watched the videos and I tried to set up my first worm bin. The bedding is also their food. All right, so you'll see, there's the fine, beautiful castings that everybody wants to come and purchase from us. Look at that. That is worm manure. Look at that. Tea, paper, cardboard. That's right. Now watch. He puts it in on this end. He runs it. See the larger stuff coming down? It's not really falling through. Where is it coming out at? Into the bucket. Now, I'll tell you guys what we also did to prepare to run this bed because this bed needs to be completely reset up. What we did here at Starkey Farmstead was I fed all the worms, let me see if I can find them, on this end. The last time that I brought organic vegetables out here ground up, I brought it to this side. Why? It's a very good question. My worms would migrate from the further side of the bed over here to get a hold to that food. I put a little bit of sugar at my dad, Papa Sammy's suggestion. Put a little sugar, it tracks them even faster. And uh, the worms migrated to this end so that as we run it, I have less worms coming through. Second thing I wanna point out, plastic, okay? We're very careful, but it still always finds a way into our beds. We pull all the plastic off the cardboard before we put it in, but if you miss even a tiny piece, as they eat the cardboard, because like I said earlier, their bedding is their food. They're gonna eat through the cardboard. If there's any plastic at all, it's gonna get left in the bed. You just pick it back out, guys. If you use shredded paper, which I've got a mess over here, but we do shred paper, and you leave the little window, see it? The little window in the envelope, the little plastic window, and you shred without thinking, put that paper in here, you're gonna come up with a little bit of plastic. It happens, it's okay. <laughs> if you use leaves out of your yard like we do, you're gonna come up with a couple of snails. That's okay too. They're all part of a healthy ecosystem. So working together, I mean, look at this. This is tremendous. But it's also their poop. And if you have any animals on your property, if you've ever grown any livestock and red wigglers, that's what we use for our composting worms. They are, guys, they really, really are small livestock. You cannot leave them in their own manure for too long. They will stop breeding. They will run out of food. They will become sick. They will stunt their growth. They'll die. All right, you'll notice that your population drops back tremendously. And I'll be honest, it's what I noticed in this bed the other day. I normally have 25,000 worms on each side. And I just felt like my worms didn't look like they normally look. They weren't as active. There weren't as many when I moved things around. So I called my dad and I said, Daddy, we need to run the whole bed. Running a bed that size is going to take us about two hours and then we get to set it back up. Two-fold system going on here. We have cardboard on top. We have plastic over that. As the moisture goes through the cardboard and to the plastic, it drips back down onto the cardboard, keeping the cardboard moist, which means if the cardboard on top of your bed is moist, this, guys, is moist too. 
Once that cardboard dries out, it'll start pulling the moisture from the bedding back to it. So you gotta keep your cardboard on top moist, not wet. It just needs to be moist. <laughs> I don't know any other way to say it. You will learn as you go, but you have to start somewhere. So whether you're gonna try to make a big bed, like we did here, or you can also use one of these. We're experimenting with that. I haven't gotten it quite down, so it's empty right now. But there are ways to do composting bins. You can do them in your house. You can do them directly in the ground. My dad had a beautiful one. Daddy, how did you set the one up that was in your bed, in your ground? Uh, I took two by uh, eight and stacked them double. Okay. First thing I did was put this queen on the ground where they couldn't go. Yes. To trap them. And two by, the same thing as this, built it with a frame, covered it, and I put a uh, Harbor Freight, that $98 little canopy, yes. over it, and there it was. That thing, the problem I had was, was rats and coons. Yes. So I had to build a, a screen cover. So, yeah, I remember that. Cover it. To keep them from going in there and digging them up and eating them. Yeah, because y'all went on vacation one time and came back and what was it, an armadillo had eaten? <laughs> yeah, had done a good job. Y'all, when I tell you, he probably ate 25,000 worms. I, I'm not even lying. This armadillo was in there for three days just partying it up while they were going on vacation. Um, I will be honest, we have had a field rat burrow into one of our beds. So what we did was, A, we got a cat. <laughs> And she was wonderful. One day I came in here and the big field rat was on the ground dead. I think I have a picture. I'll try to put it in here for you guys. It was huge. So you will get animals coming in trying to get into your worm bins. Uh, I mean, there's things like eggshells. I grind my vegetables up before I put them in here. But I've seen my dad layer his with, with vegetable peelings and stuff just on the top and let it them naturally break it down. I grind mine up because I run my beds more often. You want to grow potatoes? Peel your potatoes, lay the peelings down in here, like yay deep, inch or two under, and wait about a week, and you'll have a potato sheet sticking up that high. Take it out gently, go out in the garden and plant it, and you go with your potatoes. Wow, I wonder if you could do sweet potato slips like that. Oh yeah. It, 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 it'll root this in a heartbeat. Okay, South Louisiana, all in Georgia, Florida, Texas, Mississippi, you guys listening because we all love our sweet potatoes in the South. There's your tip for the day, guys. Get your slips, get them buried into and your, your beds. And when you peel your sweet potatoes, just put the peelings in here. Ice potatoes, put the peelings in here. And just gently cover it back up. Yeah, just throw them down in there and cover them up. Pull your cover back over it, wait a week, open it back up. Take the potatoes out because the, the potato peelings to have little roots and a little shoot. Yes. Go out there and plant it about that deep in your garden and let it go. Let it go. That's how I grow my potatoes. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm going to tell you what, guys. Um, we are not OMRI certified yet. You hear me say yet because I've always got plans. I've got goals. I've got a to-do list a mile long for this formstead, but if you are a hobby form, a formstead, a market gardener, or you're just a, a small garden just for fun, guys, you can do this in your own house. You yeah. can do it in your shop, your you can, your garage. In New York City, some of the most famous restaurants in the world have these in their basement. They take their food scrap downstairs to that worm bin. And, and they, they are processing, the worms processing, then they donate it to local gardeners. Wow. Look yeah, look it up. My dad's right, y'all. He's 80, and there's so much wisdom in that head. If he tells you you can do it, you can take it to the bank. It's doable. So again, our famous saying for you guys are you can always find a reason why you can't. Today, today your goal is to find a reason why you can. Have a blessed day coming to you with our honored Farm Manager Papa Sammy at Starkey Farmstead. Hey guys, so my dad was running my bed for me and he hit a food pile. That's why I said when you want to run your worm bed, go ahead and feed on one side of your bed. Look at that. I know it probably doesn't like much to you, but there are so many different size worms in that pile. And this is, this is what they do. They congregate to where the food is. Now all of this 
Like I said, bedding is food. But if you're gonna run your beds, try to get your herd, your small livestock, to change fields. Similar to running cows or, or moving sustainable ecosystems. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Just wanted to point that out to you. Make sure you put your food piles on one side of your bed about three days before you decide you want to run them. Now look, it's not swinging anymore, look. Oh, it does work. Okay, so my dad did a little rigging for me and we've got our... Maybe that stuff coming in. Yeah, we got it at a better angle. All right, so we inherited this setup from my dad. You guys have if ever watched any of Papa Sammy's other videos, uh, Faith Mustard Greens, I think it's called Mustard Greens Faith and the Love of a Family, maybe. He, he was hit by a red oak tree and pinned for 80 minutes. Well, that red oak went through his shop. It also hit and bit this. Well, I inherited all of that and we hung it. You can see we hung it from the rafter. My husband built like an extra thing for that to hold it, but it was real rickety. So he stabilized it for me for running. Uh, the worm casting's easier. So the whole thing doesn't shake. So, you know, look guys, if you're homesteading, if you're farming, if you are hobby farming, if you are farmsteading, you are always going to be making adjustments to the things on your property. That's called evolving. That is how you're supposed to do it. Every time you turn around, you're gonna find a better way to make that closed system work for you. So that's another tip for you, coming to you from Starkey Farmstead. Wow, look at the castings in that, guys. That's why we had her run it. <laughs> yeah, he taps the wire because your castings are damp. And they will they will stick. They're, yeah, they're not wet, they're damp. They have, like I said, moist. Moist is the word of the day. Everybody say moist, yay. Moist is your word for today. Has to be moist, guys, your worms. They have to have that moisture. They will dry out and basically they suffocate. Thanks for watching with us, guys. Let's just do a little review real quick. You can make your worm bins anywhere that you want to make them in any shape using any materials. Just know you'll probably run into a problem here and there and you will find a solution. Next tip, bedding is food. Please watch the next video we have coming up on setting up your worm bin. We'll go over what you can use in those beds to set them up, and we'll talk to you all about that. We appreciate you guys watching. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and that bell, and to like and comment. Tell us what you want to learn about. Tell us, have you tried worm bins? Let's talk about it. Let's open up a discussion. We here at Starkey Farmstead offer tours. You can come here and you can learn about all of these different processes in person on the farm. Papa Sammy and I can also come to schools and educational facilities of any age and show this system to your students. This is knowledge, guys, that we don't want to lose. Fertilizer costs are going up every single day and we're finding out more and more and more that the fertilizers, pesticides, fungicides that we have been using for the past 60 years are poison. They're poisoning our lakes, our rivers, all of our fresh water sources. They're seeping into our underground aquifers. They're poisoning our children. It's just not a good system. It's not sustainable, it's poison. But we can correct that as a community, as a state, as a country, and as a world. So we invite you to hang in there with Papa Sammy and I as we go through all the different systems that we have now created to close the loop and our closed loop organic, regenerative, sustainable farmstead. If you have never accepted Jesus, we'd like to offer that opportunity to you right now. All you have to do is repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask Jesus to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I ask you to wash me cleanse me and make me new renew me lord holy spirit i ask you to come into my life I ask you to give me wisdom and knowledge and I ask you to help pull out by the roots 
all the things in my life, Lord, that are sinful and displeasing to you. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. You guys have a blessed day. Thank you for watching.